Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to be comparing Origins 325A to the Avenger Stalker. I picked these two ships because of the number of similarities that they have to one another, which includes both of them being labeled as interdiction ships. They're each designed to be run by a single crew member. The two of them are classified to be within the same size category. They're both capable of doing any mission that's listed in the mission manager, and they have an identical set of weapon hardpoints. Very similar components load out, and they can each perform on a near equal level, both in space and within an atmosphere. At first I was hesitant to make this video, feeling that it was too much of a rehashing of the 300i versus the Avenger Titan. But after doing some research, I found that these two ships offer more of a unique comparison than I originally had thought. And both of them seem to be more closely matched, while offering an interesting twist as to how they differentiate themselves from one another. Regardless of all the similarities, there's one major difference between them. And that's in how they go about utilizing their cabin space to satisfy their specialized needs. These decisions are going to affect further gameplay in significant ways, which is a concept which I'm going to dive into more detail about later on in this video. First, I'm going to take a look at the 325A. I've recently done a Battle Royale video that compares all the 300 ships with one another, and I go into a lot more detail about the 325A in it in case you're interested in hearing more. But to summarize, the 325A is produced by Origin Jumpworks, and is the fighter variant out of the 300 series. Its focus is on being an interdiction ship, which is an odd choice for a manufacturer that's known for specializing in high-end luxury touring vessels. The 325A has a size 4 weapon hardpoint on the nose, and two size 3 weapon hardpoints that are located on the wings. It comes stocked with four size 2 and four size 3 missiles, and it can carry four SUs worth of cargo. The 325A has the third highest level of performance among the ships in the 300 series, and offers the best offensive capabilities while retaining all the amenities that the series has to offer. Its onboard amenities includes a bed that can be used to log out of the game from, a wall-mounted monitor, a bathroom, a food prep area, mini-fridge, a weapons rack, and a locker, as well as additional features like the food maker and coffee machine, and vanity items like the sound system, clock, and picture frame. The interior consists of a single open space that not only feels spacious, but also provides easy access to everything located within it. And the sunroof, for lack of a better term to call it, extends for the entire length of the ship, providing an incredibly unencumbered view of the surrounding vista. So in essence, it retains all of the touring features that makes the 300 series a luxury vessel, while gaining a level of combat proficiency that's equal to the best that any other ship in the 300 family has to offer. The number of built-in luxury features that it has is going to add so much more convenience to your game playing experience. Like for instance, having immediate access to a weapons rack and a locker. This is going to greatly enhance the FPS aspect of the game for 325 owners, by allowing you to land, change into some armor, and grab a better weapon to use right from the confines of your ship. Another convenience is going to be having onboard access to the facilities that are needed to satisfy nearly all the survival mechanics found in the game, and to being able to use the 325A as a logging off and spawn point to begin playing the game again from. So this ship provides a higher level of survivability for the pilot through better protection, by having an above par weapons loadout for a non-military ship of its size, and allows you to be better outfitted for doing ground based missions that's going to require you to have to leave the ship. The cargo bay is located on a belly lift that can be retracted into the undercarriage of the ship, and anything that's been stowed in there will not be accessible from within the vessel or after the lift's been closed. This method of storing cargo is extremely efficient in how it uses space, and since it's fully enclosed within the ship, it's also going to be the safest way to transport cargo. The downside to this setup is that the cargo bay has more length and width to it, but not a lot of height, and as a result will limit the types of things that can be stored within it. Having 4 SCUs worth of cargo space may not seem like a lot, but it's still enough room to be used for delivering boxes or to retrieve goods that you've acquired from FPS missions and can be used to store scavenged components from derelicts or other items that you've acquired from disabled ships. 
And although it's not a huge amount of storage, it's still enough to be able to carry a small amount of cargo on the side. So that every time you make a trip, you can take a few boxes of cargo to sell when you arrive at your destination. Which could earn you a little extra UEC, or at the very least pay for the cost of the fuel that was used in order to get there in the first place. I'd also like to address something when it comes to the 325's amount of storage space. When I first started out cargo hauling, I used the default amount of credits that most people are going to be starting the game with, which is going to be the 2000 UEC that you'd get from the Mustang or the Aurora starter packages, plus the additional 5000 UEC that comes from using someone's referral number. And that would generally leave me with enough money to buy some starting gear and maybe a couple of SCUs worth of cargo, depending on what I ended up buying. And I found that when working with that amount of UEC, it took a number of cargo runs before I could even afford to fill a 325A's cargo bay up with goods. And after you've done that, you can look into purchasing more expensive types of cargo to trade with. And as a rule of thumb, you should never spend more than half to a quarter of your total UEC on a single run. This is so that you don't end up being left penniless just in case something happens, and it usually does. So going by this example, the 325A is going to be a viable cargo runner for new players, based on the amount of space and the amount of money that you're going to have to work with. And after you've progressed past that point where hauling this amount of cargo isn't earning you the kind of UEC that you're looking for, that cargo space could still allow the ship to be used as a viable blockade slash drug runner, it provides ample room for carrying spare components, or could be used to store additional gear. Overall, this ship could be used to generate the kind of revenue that you'll eventually need to upgrade to a medium-sized ship, or a ship that specializes in whatever category you choose to continue your career path in. For a ship of its size, it's well protected, it has a lot of onboard facilities, and has a gorgeous looking interior, especially for being a civilian class light fighter that does a little of everything, and is more than capable enough to get you through that initial phase when you're just starting out and trying to make a name for yourself. And even after you've acquired a few more ships, the 325A is going to continue to remain being a good multi-purpose fighter to have as a permanent addition to your fleet. The Stalker is manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, and is one in a series of ships that makes up the Avenger lineup. The Avenger ship that the Stalker is based on was originally a military craft that acted as the premier frontline carrier plane of the UEE. After the fall of the Messer regime, a good portion of the Navy's Aegis ships were decommissioned, including the Avenger. These ships were so well built that after being decommissioned, they were sought after and repurposed for use by the Advocacy and other local law enforcement agencies. There are also three variants of the Avengers that are currently being aimed at the civilian market, which namely are the Stalker, the Warlock, and the Titan. The Titan is the cargo hauling variant, while the Warlock uses an EMP generator to interdict ships, and of course there's the Stalker, which is also labeled as being an interdiction craft, but is more specifically designed to be a bounty hunting variant. There's also the Renegade, which is a special edition variation of the Titan, that has a unique skin, thicker armor, and a special loadout that's been hand-tailored for dogfighting. For armaments, the Stalker has two size 3 weapon hardpoints on the wings, and one size 4 weapon hardpoint on the nose, and four size 2 missiles. The Avenger series has been updated, and has gone through a complete rework of its old model, and although the look of the new version has remained very true to the original design, it has been given a significant size increase and is now basically a third bigger than it used to be. Some upgrades to it includes being able to choose to either exit the ship directly from the cockpit, or to be able to go back into the ship's cabin, which was previously a feature that was exclusive to the Warlock. The interior has been redesigned to be easier to walk around and to be able to move from section to section within the ship. The middle portion of the vessel is where the bed is located, which is the only amenity that's been confirmed to come with this ship. But of all the extra features that a ship can have, this is one of the most important, since it allows a player to log out of the game at any time, and to be able to spawn back into that same location when you log back in. This is also where the internal access to all of its components could be found. This is going to allow you to be able to quickly repair, replace, or add subcomponents as needed from the safety of the ship's interior. 
The rear portion of the stalker houses a series of prisoner transports that are going to be used for storing bounties in. And it would be nice if the stalker had the option to be able to remove those storage chambers so that you could use the ship for cargo hauling, which would give you the equivalent of 8 SCUs worth of space. But for the time being, you can't. And I'm going to continue on with the assumption that we are not going to be able to, unless at some future time it's stated otherwise. The stalker doesn't have any inherent space as specified for storing cargo. But the runway that's located in between the pods and within the cabin is enough room to be able to drop a mission box or a loose piece of cargo. So you can currently use the stalker to do delivery missions and to be able to pick up the occasional extra cargo container. The biggest advantage to the stalker is that it can engage in a career path that the 325A can't, and that's bounty hunting. And not the kind of bounty hunting mission that you're going to find listed under the contracts manager, but as an actual career path that you can make a living off of. Since it's designed to be used for bounty hunting, I'd like to eventually see a locker and weapons rack added into this ship. And for those of you who thought that some of the closed shutters that you'll find opposite the bed are lockers, they're not. They're going to be used for housing components. At some point there may be some kind of modularity put into play sometime in the future that allows you to swap something out, like one or more of the prisoner containers in favor of a locker, but so far no such plans have been announced. But there are still a lot of things to come with regards to these ships and customization options. For instance, the addition of items hard points within a vessel, which could be used to place an additional weapons rack on. And designers have already expressed the need for most ships to have additional storage that could be used to house a weapon in which is something that they're already planning on adding to some of the light fighters like the Gladius. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see how far this feature is going to extend from there. When it comes to components, the 325A has the exact same loadout as the Stalker, with the exception of the 325 having one extra small fuel tank, which is going to give it more of an advantage when it comes to range. But having an extra small fuel tank is going to be a convenience, not a game changer. The 325A also has a bit of an advantage when it comes to offensive capabilities, since it has better armor and double the number of missiles than the Stalker, half of which are size 3s. But when it comes to guns, both ships match up evenly, having the same number of weapons hardpoints that are equal in size. It should be noted that the 325A comes with a fixed loadout, which I tend to favor, while the Stalker comes with a gimbaled loadout. But of course, this is a matter of personal preference. A gimbaled loadout is going to do less damage, but is going to better complement the fighting style of an agile ship, while a fixed loadout allows you to maximize your damage output, but is going to make it harder to keep your reticule locked on a target especially if they keep insisting on lancing with you. When comparing performance changes since the new flight model was implemented, the 325A's top speed when traveling in space is 1,235, while the Stalker's top speed is 1,307. Both ships accelerate quickly and can come to a stop just as fast without having to worry about overheating the ship in the process. They're also aerodynamically crafted and can handle equally as well within an atmosphere. When it comes to specifics and how they handle, the Stalker has a slightly faster pitch, yaw, and roll speed, while the 25A has a slightly faster X, Y, and Z acceleration rate. But in the end, the differences between how they perform in each area is not significant, and averages out to be about the same. The two biggest differences between these ships is in the types of amenities that they come with, and the issue of having cargo hauling space as opposed to having prisoner transports. The 325A is a bit more of an independent vehicle which allows you to change into armor, carry better weapons on a rack, has access to food, water, and a bathroom, and a bed. While the only amenity that the Stalker comes with is a bed, which in my opinion is the best one of these options to have. The two ships are equally capable of doing the same types of missions, but the 325A's belly loader is going to provide opportunities that the Stalker isn't going to be able to take advantage of like for instance being able to do some light scavenging on the side. Take this for an example. If you came upon a wreck, you could scavenge some choice components from it or even nab a ship's weapon that was still attached to its hull. If you came across any cargo boxes, you could stow them in the bay and lock it down on the cargo grid to keep it from banging around and getting it or the ship damaged. 
And you could bring back some acquisitions from an FPS raid, like the type that you'd come across while doing the Pacheco mission. It also allows the ship to do some light cargo hauling, courier missions, and drug running. The ship is an ideal blockade runner, and has the potential to be an excellent smuggler. The Stalker may not have any room that's dedicated to storing cargo, but there's no rules against bringing loose boxes and depositing them anywhere that there's space to put it. The only issue is that they're not going to be secure, and during the course of your travels, depending on how rough of a ride it ends up being, they could be thrown about damaging the contents, the ship, or even an unlucky crew member that happens to be standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. All ships have a gravity generator that, for the most part, is going to keep things within it relatively stable and firmly placed on the ground. And ships are also going to have inertial dampeners that keep people within it safe from the effects of momentum shifts, and from being thrown about within the cabin. Of course it's going to have limitations, so any high speed moves that the pilot takes which exceeds the dampener's ability to suppress are going to be felt by the people and things located within the ship. Also any excessive amounts of damage that's done to the ship could shake it past the point where the inertial dampeners could absorb the impact, and potentially knock people around and anything else that hasn't been properly secured. And it's anybody's guess as to how the specific details are going to work out with regards to how loose cargo is going to react when going into and out of quantum. We already have a rough idea, but the real devil's in the details. More than likely that things are going to have to be secured before jumping, and anything that hasn't been properly stowed is going to be hurled about as a result of the sudden increase in momentum, and again when you return to normal speeds. But how much and to what extent hasn't been fully worked out? And before you ask, I've already tried putting boxes into the prisoner transports, but with no luck. And one last thing with regards to cargo. If you look down at the runway, you can see maglock tiles. So the possibility exists that you may be able to lock something down that's been placed in that area. You're just not going to be able to use that space to do any official cargo hauling that requires purchasing and selling goods at a kiosk. The main thing that it'll come down to when comparing these two ships is going to be this. In the end, what do you feel is going to be the more lucrative feature for you to have? Is it going to be the ability to carry four SEUs worth of cargo, or being able to fully execute doing bounty hunting missions? And I don't mean bounty hunting as it exists in the game right now, which consists of tracking down and blowing up a specific target. In the future, bounty hunting is going to require you to bring back a body, alive or dead, to the Office of the Advocacy, which is going to be your proof that the job was completed. This is because having a full body to back up your claim is going to be pretty much indisputable evidence that the job was done. The containment pod is going to act like a type of grid onto itself, where once a bounty is placed within it, they'll be converted, in essence, into a commodity that you can use to trade or sell. And once the bounty has been converted into that state, you'll be able to turn it into the advocacy for cash. Most likely, this would be conducted through a specific terminal that would be found within the advocacy, and it would read the prisoner grid of the stalker much like a trading kiosk would read a ship's cargo grid. It would then check the identity of the bodies you have on board, calculate a bounty price, and then allow you to process the transaction. Bringing back a live prisoner is going to pay out a lot more than it would for a dead one, and you should be aptly compensated for the level of difficulty that it's going to take in order to bring them back alive. The 325A can engage in doing traditional cargo trading that involves going to a station, buying cargo, and transporting it to somewhere else, but only has a limited amount of space that's dedicated to doing this. However, the Stalker is going to be able to do any kind of bounty hunting mission that becomes available, with the only gating mechanism being not the ship, but the player's skill level. On one hand you have the 325A, which is a sleek high profile luxury fighter ship that's made specifically for the civilian market by a company that's built a reputation on creating high quality, finely crafted spaceships for a certain kind of clientele that's famously known for being hard to please and even harder to impress. The ship combines all the amenities of a penthouse apartment that's held within the sleek lines of a deadly fighter. It's a highly sought after, multi-purpose tier 2 vessel that can do a little of most everything, yet leans more heavily towards being combat focused. 
the ship represents a very different kind of interdiction craft. One that seems to contradict the very notion of a traditional pirate, and instead conjures up an entirely new image altogether. Something that falls along the lines of the gentleman brigand or a high-class privateer. It would be someone who's made quite the living off of piracy and wants you to know it. The more I think about it, the more it seems to be the antithesis of the philosophy that lies behind a Drake ship. It cheats the notion of having to give something up in order to gain more, and instead keeps it all for itself. This ship differentiates itself from the Stalker in three major ways. First is the interior aesthetics of the ship, which, as I stated before, is an inherited trait of the luxury touring vessel chassis that it's based on. Secondly is the number of conveniences that it provides, all of which are easily accessible from within the cabin of the ship. And lastly is that this ship has a cargo hold which gives it the ability to trade, store components and gear, or safely lock down any of the items that you find during the course of your adventures. It may be one of the smallest cargo holds in the 300 series, but it's still going to be useful nonetheless, and is responsible for adding a lot of versatility to this ship. The Stalker was manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, which is one of the most widely known and highly respected military ship manufacturers within the UEE. The fact that the Avenger series is still valued by local police and private security forces alike even after all this time is a testimony to the dependability of this craft. The Stalker has the classic sleek look that's inherent to all Aegis ships, but the interior belies its military background by having more of a Spartan feel to it that's a lot less showy and more utilitarian in nature. And this is also a very versatile ship that's been purpose-built for solo pilots. It has an incredibly open cockpit view, it's fast and has responsive handling both in space and when flying planet side, it has an impressive weapons loadout, and it can be used for doing any non-career path based missions as well as being purpose built for bounty hunting. What it lacks is the ability to store cargo, or to be able to lock anything down for transport, so you cannot sell, haul, or purchase cargo from a kiosk using this ship. But what it can do is something that the 325A cannot, and that's pursue a career in bounty hunting. If done right, bounty hunting has the potential to be one of the most fun and varied career paths in the game. It can involve chasing down criminals on foot, interdicting and boarding ships, employing elements that involve stealth, hand-to-hand -hand tactics, and ranged combat, and could take you out to the far corners of the galaxy in pursuit of your target. Being a registered bounty hunter with the advocacy is going to allow you to carry certain weapons through checkpoints that other people are not going to be allowed to have. And the stalker can hold up to six prisoners before it has to go back to the local advocacy branch in order to turn them in. The only counter argument to this is that all the things that the 325A is good at doing can be done in the game right now. And that includes doing missions, cargo hauling, and even drug running. While bounty hunting is a career path that's only in its infancy of development, and the mechanics that surround bounty hunting haven't even begun to be realized in game. So any assumptions about how fun it's going to end up being, or even how much money can be made from it is purely speculative at this point. So as a final summary, if you're looking for a ship that performs at a certain level, is good for atmospheric and space travel, has an above average weapons loadout, is designed for solo gameplay, and is an overall good multi-purpose ship, then you can't go wrong with either choice. But if you prefer to have something that's more of a high class looking ship both inside and out, that's filled with all the modern conveniences that you could want, and if you value cargo hauling, living the life of a blockade runner, or being able to have extra storage on your ship, then you'd be more interested in the 325A. And if you like the Spartan, high-quality, low-frills type of ship that offers what you're going to need and not want, and allows you to be able to live the life of a futuristic bounty hunter, then the Stalker is going to be more your style. I'm your host, Law of the West. Thanks for tuning in, and take care.